Hello everybody, John here again, and today on To The Garage, we're again working on the camper van and specifically looking at the charger unit. So for those of you who are new to the channel, um, we look at all sorts of projects, uh, mainly car based or van in this case, an awful lot of Jaguar based stuff, a lot of Volkswagen based stuff, and we're currently doing a bit of a refit and refurb on Olive, the T2 transporter camper van. She's a late bay, 1979. And today we're looking at the charger unit because I'm about to start reinstalling all the electrical components into the interior. And I didn't know how this thing worked. So I found out, I've labeled it up and I know that from a lot of stuff I've looked on the forum, there's quite a few people who want to know how to wire these things up, how they work, what they do, etc., etc. So I'll share with you. So when I bought the van and disassembled it, although this was installed, a lot of the wiring had been already disabled. Um, I think there'd been some problems with the fridge and then the auxiliary battery had been removed and over time things had got disconnected and this was basically redundant. And it's a supercharger uh, by Peter Everard Limited of Stroud. It's a MCF5 and it's what's commonly referred to as a ZIG unit or ZIG charger. So I need to put this back in and my issue is I've had loads of camper vans. I'm always confused by <laughs> the uh, switch gear you know car charger what does that charge the car battery uh mains does that turn on the 240 volt socket etc etc they're not the clearest of uh, bits of labeling and when you get to the back now i've added a lot of information here but you've just got this array of connectors which i've conveniently labeled up so what i thought i'd do is i've been testing this to make sure it works before i reinstall it and making sure I understand where everything goes. I thought I'd share with you because my understanding has improved no end. So, start off by looking at all this stuff on the front. Now I've got this actually plugged into the mains at the moment. So, this thing on the left, what does it actually do? What it actually does is turns on a battery charger inside this unit and it pushes out about 15 volts uh, to charge your auxiliary battery so that's the battery you're going to use to run the camper part of your setup not your car battery and with this particular unit i don't see any uh, circumstance by which it charges the car battery so when you turn this on lights up starts humming and we are at the moment clicked onto the mains on this next switch so how you should interpret this is the battery charger is on and i should charge the auxiliary battery using the mains using this charger what does that actually mean on the back let's have a little look So I've labelled all the terminals for you, just to make things a little easier. So you've got 1 to 12, and 1, which is identified by having the blue wire going to it, so you know you're at the 1 end, is your vehicle battery. That is the connections to the battery which starts and runs your car or van. 3 and 4 goes to your auxiliary battery. That's the battery that you're going to use to run your lighting, um, maybe run your fridge, to power up some sockets for 12 volt outlets for USB, uh, work your water pump inside your camper van. That battery connects to those. And these leads at the moment are connected to the battery which is just in the background there. Here's my unit. I'm going to turn off the red button, the charge, just for a second, and show you oops, that if I take a voltmeter, that's 
better. So if I now um, probe the battery, so this is not being charged. It's recently been charged, as you can tell. It's on 13.7, let's call it. Um, now if I go over to this unit, so there's nothing charging at the moment. And if I probe the various connections, the vehicle battery is not connected. So if I probe one and two, nothing. The auxiliary battery is connected. So you should get 13.6, right. So basically that's the battery voltage we just looked at. Then the 10 amp fuse is connected to um, numbers five and six and nothing. Another 10 amp fuse, seven and eight, nothing. Six amp fuse, nothing. Four amp fuse, nothing. However, oops. If on the front of the unit, I press the switch that says 12 volt off to 12 volt on. Now to say that the wiring in this is old school is an understatement of epic proportions. So uh, just a couple of features to point out. There's a couple of fuses in the back, whoops. And those are the lines in from the two batteries. And I've got 35 amp fuses. The wiring on the backs of the switch, you can see you've got exposed connectors with exposed bare wire connectors and yet yeah, it's meant to be a metal box that nobody's playing in but in order to remove this from the cabinet you remove these screws which go through the front panel through the back panel and into the woodwork and in doing so this moves and i managed to blow one of the fuses almost instantly experimenting because the back of those switches the terminals down there uh, touched the frame of the transformer because i hadn't got it held perfectly square on here so you know be aware this is wiring from another time um, and certainly not up to current standards and i would recommend insulating the bottom edge of this transformer and at least these terminals in order to improve your chances of uh, getting this thing right but basically you need to keep the front screwed on and um, not to distort the box in any way in order for it to operate properly okay so let's have a scenario we've got mains off this bottom one says if it was charging um, the battery, the auxiliary battery, it'd be charging it from the mains, not from the car or the uh, starter battery and the 12 volt on. And these show 12.9, 12.9, 12.9 .9, and 12.9. If I switch off the 12 on the back, then we've still got, obviously the battery is connected, 12.9, but all of these go dead. Brilliant. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug in the charger to the mains just flipping it around you can see what we've got is charge the um, auxiliary battery this is all about the auxiliary battery off the mains is on but this is not lit up that's the actual battery charger so we press that this starts humming 
and we go back to the back side. And the first thing to look at, the battery, which we know is 12.9, is now oops, being charged. This is the auxiliary battery, 15.4. That's what we should be getting at these two terminals because it's just the other end of those cables. 15.7 is going up. The 10 amp outlet is off. But if I switch the 12 volt on, whilst charging from the mains, then all of these will get the same voltage. It's up to 16 now, so it's not very well regulated. Uh, that's quite a lot of volts, but all happening. The vehicle battery would be connected to these end two. Is not getting any charge. So the vehicle battery is not charged from the mains from this unit. Just rolling it over. And, oops, I'm going to turn my charger off. And if I put car charger on, what that means is that while we're driving, the auxiliary battery is connected to the car battery. And as a car battery would normally be running because of its alternator at above 12 volts, 14 volts, let's say then this will receive charge. But when you're parked up, that means that the car battery is connected to this battery. And as this goes down, the car battery will go down in parallel. So the trick is only put it onto charger car, regardless of what else you've switched on over here, if you're driving and want to charge your auxiliary battery. Otherwise, keep it on charger mains at the bottom there. Um, turning the red one on actually turns on the battery charger. 12 volt will isolate these three, sorry, four pairs of positive and earth um, from their supply, just switches them off. So I hope that helps. I'll just give you another little close-up of my diagram on the back. <clears throat> so that's the numbering and what they do. You connect your vehicle battery direct to this so that it can supply um, alternator voltage into here and out of these two to help charge up your um, auxiliary battery whilst you're driving and would equally help with maybe running the 12 volt portion of your fridge. The fridge and anything else in the vehicle would be connected to these. These two are connected to your auxiliary battery, the battery used for your camper, and these will go to your various outlets. Um, trip is something that you can easily reset because a little button on the front so anything that you're plug in, plugging in or using that's a little bit dodgy is probably a good idea to connect to that and four amp um, you could say put that to a usb outlet that would probably be a good idea but the others use as you feel for it i'm going to use the six amp to my lighting the 10 amp to my pump for my water and um, a 10 amp to a outlet that is a 12 volt outlet. A four amp trip I will put to a USB outlet. All of the pairs are sharing an earth and see that 
each one of these units is connected to the other. So the negative side of each terminal is connected straight to all of the others. It means it's a really good idea to connect this one to something that is the earth of the body of the vehicle um, as well as the battery if you're running a separate negative line in just so that everything gets a really good earth. Well I hope that helps a little if you're working on a charger unit for a camper van and it's an old one like mine then that's some clues as to how to wire it up. If you're interested in what we're doing with Olive the T2 tune in check out all the previous videos on that if you're just interested in tinkering with vehicles projects in your garage then please subscribe and uh, we're always out here playing with something whether it be the slightly more modern t4 or the xk8 called purdy see you soon bye